So today, I'd like to start off our session by thinking philosophically about learning health systems and big data. I think many of us see the Amazon this way, from 10,000 feet above, as a way to get our head around the sheer size of it. The enormity, wow. The Europeans didn't explore the Amazon in full until the 1500s, and even then it took them a year to do it. They got lost, went down the wrong tributary, many people died. 400 years later, Teddy Roosevelt joined an expedition to explore just one tributary along the Amazon, the River of Doubt. It was tough going even then. He almost died nearly 400 years later. Not much progress. Today, I'm here to share with you another big river, the big river of healthcare data, and explore it along with you. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce you to my North Star. Her name is Janet. You know Janet. She's got curly red hair and freckles across her nose. She's 37, ER nurse, wears green scrubs, always ready for a chat when she comes into the clinic. I'm a melanoma doc, and she had a mole in her arm, got darker and bigger. She developed some ominous nodes, hard as a rock, underneath her right arm. After her surgeries were done, we staged it as a 3C melanoma. We weren't sure if it was going to come back. She had pain in that arm. And Janet's story changed across time, just like our stories change across time. You can imagine time on the x-axis, and in this particular case, her pain in a 0 to 10 scale on the y. In the beginning, when she had that pain in her arm, it was about a 4, 5 out of 10. The surgery happened, and the pain improved. And in fact, the pain was gone for a while, until along with the melanoma, it came back with a vengeance. We might imagine the same story, telling it now with the size of her tumor. Small, then gone, then growing large again. And in fact, each of these data elements is like a stream, a rivulet, a tiny story that ebbs and flows across time. Her pain, the size of her tumor, her sodium, maybe whether she can walk. And I imagine each of these as individual little streams of data that come together for Janet's story to form an amalgamating set of streams to generate the tributary that is Janet's story across time. And you can imagine the many Janets and Joes and Johns and Sues who come together to create the overarching river of data on which we do our work. Now, the river of data is flowing. It's an amalgamation of many patient stories that have been aggregating across time, the Amazon of information. And the learning healthcare system is like the water mill that sits on and next to that river of data and is powered by it. The Institute of Medicine reminds us that a learning healthcare system is a circuit where science, informatics, incentives, and culture are all aligned for continuous learning. And underpinning this is the river of data, interoperable liquid data. Now, often we talk about a learning healthcare system as if it's a place. We talk about the Geisinger Health System or my cancer clinic. Or we talk about a learning healthcare system as if it's an analytic framework, like continuous quality improvement. But I submit to you that a learning healthcare system is actually a philosophy, a philosophy in which one data point is used and reused for multiple purposes over time, where one data point and one patient's story, and the amalgamation of stories can serve multiple analytic purposes because we've organized them in the right way. One data point serving precision medicine, continuous quality improvement, driving patient education, and improving biologic discovery. That's what a, really, a learning health system really is. The other thing I like to think of is the water system as a highway. And it's the water highway bridging the gap 
between the clinic and research so that each is informing the other. That's our learning healthcare system. Now, Janet, she helps us navigate within our learning healthcare system. And she reminds us what it feels like to be down in the water. Because when we get down in the water, it can be a bit dirty. As you know, it kind of gushes, it's massive. There are rocks and dams and fiefdoms along the banks. It's sometimes perilous. But Janet reminds us that it starts with the spring of life. Meanwhile, we have to remember that if we're going to get in that water and work with it, it can be sometimes a bit torturous. We have to make sure that we know how to paddle and make our way. And Janet can help us. She can be our guide. As we're paddling in the rough waters of the River of Data, it also sometimes feels a bit muddy. The water is dirty, and our data aren't clean enough to do anything with it. As a matter of fact, when we have this conversation about data quality, it almost sounds like we're ready to discard it and say it's not good enough for any of the purposes for which we need it. And it's interesting when we talk about the problem with data in our learning healthcare system because we talk about it as if there's multiple different points of view. The clinicians talk about the problem in the data, with the data in learning healthcare system as all of that discussion is sort of getting in the way. With my doctoring hat on, I can kind of imagine the problems of the electronic health record, meaningful use, oh, that need for interoperability and entering more data points, getting in the way of my sitting down and talking to Janet about what really counts. It feels like the information is only emanating from me and Janet and not coming back to help us in the clinic. Meanwhile, I put on my researcher hat, and as a research community, we talk about how these I, this idea of data being collected in the clinic is supposed to help me, but they're not being collected with the kind of precision I need in order to answer the research questions in front of me. And in fact, it feels like I can't trust that stuff, and neither do my colleagues. Then there's the point of view of the analysts, who've been used to working with fixed data sets, and in fact, now we've got continuously amalgamating information that can be tough to figure out how to navigate. And then there's a regulatory environment. We're used to talking about a world of retrospective versus prospective, quality versus research. I don't need a consent form, I do need a consent form. And now we're living in this microsecond toggle of real world data where the past and the present gets all mixed up and we don't know quite how to manage it within a learning healthcare system. We're living in the big muddy. So, we need a way forward, a way to make sense of it all. Over the last decade or so, I've been working in this concept of how do we build learning healthcare systems and make that philosophy put forward by the IOM work. I've learned a lot of things, but today I'd like to bring to you three key features that seem to really help us make sense of it all make the water clear and get through the big muddy. The first of these is that the patients are our anchors. They serve as a guide in the river of data. I'm not just saying this to be lovely and cute or sound particularly caring. I'm saying this because actually if we start with the story of patients, linked patient level data that accumulates across time, we can actually start to make sense of it faster and easier. The second reason is because linked patient level data that starts with patients then allows us to put the information in context. And as information is put into contents, context, we can make sense of it better and smarter and faster in our learning healthcare system. For the river of data, the information sometimes flows from the mountains, and sometimes it's coming from a spring over near the ocean. But it all comes together. And we have the same thing where we need to integrate our data sets, some coming from the electronic health record, claims data, information coming out of our biological st sciences, starting and coming together with patient as the context. So as an example, I remember the story of Janet. Her pain data in isolation makes no sense. But now if I combine that story of her pain 
with what happened when I saw the mole on her arm, the timing of her surgery, the tumor coming back, those two pieces of information coming together make a lot more sense. What now if I take 19 data streams, as we were doing at Duke for a period of time, and pulling together amalgamated registries that we could use to clinically annotate tumor specimens? So here, we've got multiple source systems where we've got radiology data, patient-reported outcomes, clinical data, clinical trials data all coming together. There's the timing of Janet's tumor when it was collected and the story surfacing around it. And that information of integrating together around patient stories starts to put the data in context and help us make sense of it in a learning healthcare system. Third, Mark Twain reminds us that patient stories are to be read over and over again. In order to make the data cleaner, and clear in a learning healthcare system, we need to use it. And in fact, we need to package it up and get it to the people who've got the power to spot errors and tell us how to fix them. One of the things we learned in our research around learning healthcare systems was in fact, our most important constituents weren't the journals and the impact factors, they were the clinicians. We started developing reports that allowed clinicians to see the data coming in from multiple source systems and make decisions on it in two seconds or less. Don't get in their way. And what we learned was that then they could have meaningful data, they wanted it in the clinic, and they could tell us that point over there is wrong, or here's the patient's story that will, make you, will help you make more sense of this information. They helped us clean it up, and the data got clear. And in fact, over time, the information got better and better. So, I invite you to come into the river at eye level, to see the river of data, and to be in it with Janet. Together, we can make the data cleaner and clearer. Within a learning healthcare system, first, we need to put our patients at the center. It helps us make sense of our data. Second, we need to put our data in context and integrate our data streams so that ultimately one plus one is a sum many, many greater than two. And third, we need to continuously use and reuse our data so that actually by the process of using it, it gets cleaner and is better for us over time. That's going to be a fundamental underpinning for our learning healthcare system. And a last point about data. Data is an amazing thing. It's a non-depletable resource. Gold, riches, even water goes away when you use it, but not data. So what's amazing here is that thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. And the same happens in a learning healthcare system. We learn from our patients. By learning from our patients and putting their stories in context, we get the meaning behind the data. By working together as researchers and clinicians in all parts of the learning healthcare system, we inform each other and are strengthened by each other. And now, with technology, we can do it in real time. And that's a learning healthcare system. Thank you. <laughs>